I know for myself, I grew up here in Nassau as a young girl with my dad. But before that, my dad and my mom were in New York, and then my dad came, you know, the divorce situation. So I lived part of my life here in Nassau and part in New York. But when I moved to New York to live with my mom, it was a rough existence because she was going through her own troubles at the time. Nobody really knew about it because, you know, when your family goes through troubles, you don't tell the world. You just kind of hold it in. But during my darkest hours and my weakest moments, for me, I learned that the only thing I had that someone else could take from me were my dreams and my faith. And those were the shields that I leaned on to give me the strength to know that I have to continue to work this dream, to live this dream. I'm going to say life was rough because my mom was in so much pain for a variety of, of reasons that she stopped working for her dreams. And I watched her become disillusioned. Her life became a spiral of anger, self-doubt, confusion, and spinning around and around in vicious circles. As a child, my life became a part of this vicious circle, and there was some abuse that went along with that. But in the nighttime, no one else could control what dreams came to head for me, what came to mind. So I built my life upon learning how to work that dream, to live that dream, learning how to get over it learning how to bounce back after hitting rock bottom. Because there's nothing on the bottom but rocks. Nothing. And that's how you ever sit on a bunch of rocks? Does that feel good? <laughs> no. So you need to get up and get over it to keep it moving. I use my faith as one of the ways for me to fulfill my dream. You have to find what's going to work for you, that's going to keep you motivated, that's going to keep you excited, that's going to keep you passionate. Because life without passion is like life without purpose. We have to believe in ourselves and believe in something so that every day when we get up, we know that we're fighting and we're thriving for something that we don't feel like a waste of time and that we get to question why God has us here and God has us going through these things. If you have faith, if you have dreams, that allows you to say, this is why I'm here, and this is where I'm going. And you will begin to recognize and understand that God orders your steps. Now, I'm not going to preach a sermon to you, but you have to know that your steps have already been ordered. And it's your duty and responsibility to walk down that path that has been carved out for you. Your dreams help you to get there. Your faith gives you the strength of what you need in order to get there. Despite and in spite of everything else that's going on around you. Because see, a lot of things happen to me as a child that wasn't my fault. And that's okay, because I knew that somehow I was going to get over it because I had faith on my side. I learned as a child that my faith was stronger than my pain. And because I knew my faith was stronger than my pain, I knew my dreams would come true. So all of the accomplishments that my sword war listed didn't just happen because they dropped out of the sky. They happened because I worked for them. So the dreams that you have sitting right here, right now, they're not going to be deferred because you're going to know that dreams are not supposed to be deferred. You're going to find that plan that works for you and you're going to work that dream so you can live that dream. That's the power of dreaming. See, we also can't let people take our dreams away because as positive that you may be, what good vibes you may have, there's always going to be somebody out there. The states we call them haters. I don't know what you call them. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, okay, see, okay. People who are not going to like what you have on, the way you wear your hair, the clothes that you have, your attitude, the perfume, your lipstick. Oh, there's always going to be somebody that has something to say. But you have your dreams and your faith. So you'll know that they are entitled to their opinions. But just because they say it doesn't make it true. So those toxic people that bring poison into your life, and you got to go. Don't keep them in your circle. Even if they say they love you, they got to go because there will be people in your own family who won't believe in your dreams. Now, I know sometimes dreams are a bit far-fetched. I'm a mom of five. And I still have four at home. And some of these dreams, like that little 10 year old who tells me I'm going to play basketball. Well, so, you know, at first you have to get on the team. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be a professional basketball player. Well, you have to go to practice and get on a team. 
So we had realistic unrealistic dreams, I should say, as a parent that I helped steer and guide him in the right direction. But once you have your professional dreams, nobody should be able to take that away from you. Nobody. Because they can't steal your dreams, they can't steal your joy, because guess what? They didn't put it there. It's not for them to steal. God put them inside of you and nobody can take that from you. You have to remember that because it gets rough out there. It gets tough out there. And you face some obstacles no matter how good you are. There's probably someone just a little bit better than you. And you have to be prepared, prepared to fight that battle. We can also let things that have happened to us in the past steer us away from our dreams. We can't let that happen, whether it's our fault or not. We have to learn to use all experiences in our life, whether they're positive or negative, use those so that we can grow and we can flourish and start to begin to achieve those, those dreams. Not allowing odd things that have happened to you and around you, those negative people, toxic people, toxic situations, to stunt the growth of your dreams, to stagnate the possibilities, not letting them hold you back, not allowing them to change the way you think in a negative way. It's good if you change the way you think in a positive way because you have to change the way you think before you can change the way you behave. And if you're hanging around negativity, you'll begin to think negative. And then you begin to behave negative. So being in a program like this among other young women who are positive, among my stories who are definitely positive, that will give you the strength and you understand that I can change my way to think. I can do this. I can be this. Be, you know, I can be all these things. I didn't come from a lot. When I came home to Nassau, I felt important because my dad, I felt, was an important man. He's a legacy. When he died in December, my heart was heartbroken. You know, my whole world came crashing down. And when I came home for the funeral and all the events, I stood in awe because of all the love, the outpouring of love that we had. Three memorial services, the big funeral. I was in awe. I knew my dad was important to me. But what he meant to the country was bewildering to me. I stood in awe. But I felt so important being here. I felt important to stand and say I was Pam Levi's daughter and to have those accomplishments behind me because I knew he was proud of me. So it wasn't just being proud of myself, making our parents proud too. It's all part of the dream. Anytime I would have an accomplishment, even though Daddy was here and I was there, he would always come up to the state to support me for that. That love helped to propel me. It didn't matter what we were living in the situation we were living in before. Knowing that I had dreams and I had faith were those things that allowed me to continue. So what I say to you today, I created a resiliency formula, and I believe you guys got the book. They didn't just give you the book just to, you know, just for cute. If I know the cover is real cute. Thank you. Okay, you're supposed to read it. <laughs> okay? Because I wrote it in a language for you to understand. And it comes from personal and professional experience, but you'll learn about my resiliency formula that really is an acronym, Go Hard, with the G focused on getting over yourself, the O is overcoming your odds, the H deals with hesitancy, heart, healthy balance, and hustling in a good way. <laughs> Um, the A deals with anger. I've seen so many angry children. Not saying that you are, but there are a lot of angry people sitting in jails today. You have to learn how to deal with your anger. I've grown a lot. I tell the story of what happened to me in college. When I was so angry, and <coughs> I hit somebody, but um, you're not supposed to do that. You, I mean, you're not. And that almost cost me my membership in Alpha Kappa Alpha because that was the semester that I planned to be initiated, but we won't go back there. <laughs> the whole point is don't do it. <laughs> okay, I've had to learn to deal with my anger. I say that because I was almost on the verge of losing something very important to me. So learning to deal with your anger is the A. The R has to do with resiliency. What are you going to do? What is going to be your plan to bounce back? You know, you might be the smartest in your school right now, but then when you go to college, you may take this math class and you might be the dumbest one in there. That sounds cool, but you might be the one, the only one in the class getting the F. What are you going to do? Are you going to walk away? Are you going to crumble into pieces? You have to set up your resiliency plan. What are you going to do in order to bounce back? Because remember, this math class is a part of your dream and part of your faith. So you can't just walk away. Because if you walk away, you walk away from your dream. And I already told you what happens to people when they walk away from their dreams. You don't want to be that person. 
and indeed deals with dreams that we're talking about, death and destiny. So to summarize and to close out, I need to ask y'all, so what happens to a dream deferred? I can't hear What happens to a dream deferred? Nothing? What happens to a dream deferred? Nothing. Anybody disagree? Okay, well I want to make sure you understand that. Everybody stand up, y'all, not y'all. Now we're going to say this together. What happens to a dream deferred? Nothing. I can't hear you. What happens? Yeah. <laughs> Stay with me. What happens to a dream deferred? Nothing. What happens to a dream deferred? Nothing. What happens to a dream deferred? Nothing. You're absolutely right. Nothing. Don't let it happen. Thank you.